I, I, one thing I will say is I have no idea what I would have been like as a human being had Twitter and Instagram existed um, in the early to mid noughties when I was sort of doing a lot of this high profile celebrity related uh, presenting work because a lot of it just, you know, it's all in here and I didn't have the need or desire to film it, to film it, and share post it. it. Yeah. 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 And they knew that at the time as yeah. well. Well, social media has put pay to that kind of celebrity partying thing, yeah. hasn't it? Completely, because it's... Um, I mean, that was probably purely spontaneous, which never would have happened in this day and age, right? No, but if, if it did, the only people... Because I know that there's still... I still sometimes uh, uh, sort of move in rarefied circles, and there are times when no one gets their phones out. There's like yeah. an unwritten rule. This yeah. is the point at which we stop any social media because they have refined... They've distilled the people that are in the room to the people that only want to be there for that, to be in that moment yeah, rather right. than to say I'm in this moment. Yes. And occasionally that's a lovely place to be. And you kind of go, oh, I've got goosebumps thinking about it now because yeah. you kind of go, no one here wants this to go anywhere. This is this is a, one of those rare occasions yeah. in the 21st century where this is a moment that is happening for its own sake and some fun. You yeah. must get a lot of that in the pub though because people aren't constantly sharing, you know, they're not all kind of... Go, exactly right, yeah. Look at me, I'm in the having exactly. a pint. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, as you say, I mean, that was a treat for you guys only yeah. to lock in there yeah. forever. Yeah. But the days of, you know, the heyday of Rolling Stone magazine where the, where bands and um, and film stars and people like that would have their own kind of embedded photographer that would just follow them around all the time. They, they would yeah. be chosen by the band. And a journalist. A journalist and a, and journal a photographer yeah. would yeah. travel with them. Both of which was based completely on trust as well, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. So the photographer gets free reign. Mm -hmm. Just, just I'll be here. Yeah, and they get all the best shots. Yeah, that's that's when you would see those those you know amazing kind of reportage style photographs of uh, Mick Jagger, um, uh, Bowie. Rod Stewart, yeah. Bowie, yeah. and yeah. and uh, Grace Jones all yes. sh sharing a pizza yeah. or. And there's something. Warhol in the background with Basquiat, and you go, <laughs> "This is ridiculous." How, how the does that photo happen? That's montage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nowadays we'd say that's Photoshop, but those were real people because they were there. They were they were embedded. The closest I've ever got to that is um, the World Cup two thousand and six um, in Germany. Uh, I was working over there for the channel that became Dave at the time. It's called UKTV G two, which is a really catchy name. Yep, um, trips off the tongue. Uh, but now Dave's better, obviously. Um, the uh, um, and me and my mate James were sent out on our own to go and just find stories and report them back to this new 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 format of show, which was a sort of a live a show on di digital uh, cable that was ca carrying some of the games live, but had a lot of content, a studio show. And me as the presenter and James as the producer slash cameraman, or a predator, as you'd call them these days in the UK. In America, that still means rapist. Um, <laughs> the... Um, the uh, we would go out, you know, fly in in the morning, hire a car, drive to Gelsenkirchen or Dusseldorf or Dresden or en anywhere, find a story, go and either try and get tickets to the match or go and watch the match in a fan zone. Um, post uh, send a send a, a story back, do a live unilateral, move on to the next city. We do three day chunks. On our first trip to Frankfurt, we bumped into Ray Winston and his mates in a hotel. And we did an interview with him and his mates, all of his old West Ham fan uh, friends for, since he was a kid. Um, and uh, because we sp spoke to all of them and not just Ray, um, I think he really liked us and he invited us to join him like l the next time we were in. And, and that just developed to the point that they were staying in a um, like an old whatever the Austrian equivalent of a manor house is um, in Kustein, just across the border uh, from South Germany, from Bavaria. And about halfway through the World Cup, they said, well, just come and stay with us. You know, this is where we, this is our party central. This is our bunker. And they had, lo you know, they were doing loads of World War II that, that was there. We, we've got it. We, we've got a, a safe house, blah, 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 whatever the lingo is. Um, but me and James were kind of embedded there and we were filming. And there was one day and it was, you know, it was just all blokes. Um, and it was very boozy. But there was one day where we'd been filming Swimming in the Lake chats about the England team, chats about hooliganism. Uh, and then there was a point, you know, we'd had a beer and, and Ray just kind of looked at James and went, 
camera goes away now, lads. And we kind of went, Ooh. oh, okay. Oof. And then we were in, in, but undocumented. And you go, wow. And that, that felt like those that's moments from yeah, Rolling that, Stone that magazine. Yeah, 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 yeah. From... And nothing, what I'm saying is nothing, no, nothing bad happened. Yeah. Nothing illegal, wrong, yeah. transgressive, anything happened. It was just like, we just want to relax now. Uh, we don't want to worry about being on, on. So let's not document this. And it just was a quiet word in yeah. the gravelly voice. Yeah. And you can bet and play at the same time. And did he call you a slag at any point? <laughs> he didn't. It was, it was always he, he, did, he did say this <laughs> one time. Because we were completely un, undocumented, <laughs> whatever the phrase is, uh, we un, un, um, accredited, me and James. But because we were often with Ray and his gang, uh, he had access to the England team. Ray did because he was the ambassador for England fans. So he was an anti-hooliganism ambassador. And so we went to an England training camp one day. Sven Joran Eriksson was the boss at the time. And uh, we were just following Ray. <laughs> so it's me, James, Ray Winston. And he goes under the rope. And we just followed because the people at the England training camp just presumed we were his personal crew. Well, you were. Well, but no one had agreed, has not agreed with the FA or anything. And we got under it and Ray turned around and went... You still with us, James? You slippery bastard! <laughs> <laughs> that was the closest we got to you, slag. It was, and me and James now we regularly see each other, and it was he, he regularly will go, you slippery bastard. 